This is the story of how the leopard got his spots, and it happened just so. Long ago, in the high and far off times, there was a place in Africa called the High Veldt. And it was exclusively bare and hot, and a sandy yellowish brown all over. The giraffe and zebra and eland lived there. And they were all exclusively sandy, yellowish brown all over, too. But the leopard was the most exclusivest, sandiest, yellowest, brownest of them all. He matched the color of the sandy, yellowish, brownish high felt to a hair, which was very bad for the giraffe and zebra and eland. And also, there was a sandy, yellowish Ethiopian who used to hunt with the leopard. Till the giraffe and the zebra and the eland just didn't know which way to jump next. Finally, they all decided to run far and far away until at last they came upon a great tall forest full of stripy, speckly, patchy, blatchy shadows, and there they hid. After a time, what with standing half in and half out of the shade, and what with the slippery, slidey shadows falling on them, they began to change. The giraffe grew blotchy, and the zebra grew stripy. And the eland grew darker and darker, with little wavy lines on his back. So they melted into the exclusively speckly, spickly forest, and had a lovely time. Meanwhile, the leopard and the Ethiopian were hunting round the exclusively sandy, yellowish-brown, very hot high veldt, wondering where all their breakfasts, dinners and teas had gone. Till at last, they came upon Bavion, the dog-headed baboon, who was quite the wisest animal in all Africa. Wake up, Bavion, said Leopard, and tell us where all the game has gone. Then, said Bavion, the game has gone into other spots, Leopard, and my advice to you is to go into other spots too. Please excuse my impetuous friend, said the Ethiopian, but he has rather forgotten his manners through not having eaten for such a long time. What he means is, could you please be so kind as to tell us of the present whereabouts of giraffe, zebra and eland, otherwise known as fair game? Then, said Bavion, the game has gone away for a change, and my advice to you, Ethiopian, is to change too. The leopard and the Ethiopian thanked Bavion for his help, and still, rather puzzled, they continued on their way, hunting for the lost game. After ever so many days, they came upon the great tall forest, all speckled and sprottled and dotted and splashed and slashed and hatched with shadows. What is this place? said the leopard. I don't know, said the Ethiopian, but it must be the new home of our lost game, for I can smell giraffe and I can hear giraffe. But I can't see giraffe. That's curious, said the leopard. I suppose it's cause we've just come in out of the sunshine. I can smell a zebra and I can hear a zebra, but I can't see zebra. 
It's such a long time since we last hunted them, said the Ethiopian. Perhaps we've forgotten what they look like. Ha, huh, said the leopard. I remember them perfectly. Giraffe is taller, exclusively sandy yellow. Zebra is smaller, exclusively yellowish brown. Well, said the Ethiopian, they ought to show up in here like ripe bananas in a coal hole. But they didn't. The leopard and the Ethiopian hunted all day. And though they could smell game and hear game, they never saw any game at all. As darkness fell, Leopard heard something breathing sniffily in the starlight. He jumped at the noise. And it smelt like zebra. And it felt like zebra. And it kicked like zebra. But he couldn't see it. So he said, Be still, oh you person without any form. I shall sit on your head till morning, so you will not escape. And then I might discover who you are. Then the Ethiopian shouted, I've caught something I can't see. It smells like giraffe and it kicks like giraffe. But it hasn't any form. Don't you trust it, said the leopard. Sit on its head till the morning. Then we'll find out what this is all about. So they sat on them hard until morning came. And then Leopard said, What have you at your end of the breakfast table, brother? Well, it ought to be exclusively sandy yellow. And it ought to be giraffe. But it's all covered with orangey browny blotches. What have you at your end of the breakfast table, brother? Well, said the Leopard, it ought to be exclusively yellowish brown, and it ought to be zebra, but it's all covered with black stripes. This is a really clever trick, isn't it? Yesterday we couldn't see them at all, but now we can. Tell me, zebra, how is it done? Let us up, said the zebra, and we'll show you. Now watch, said the zebra. This is the way it's done. One, two, three. And where's your breakfast? Now watch, said the giraffe. This is how it's done. One, two, three. And where's your breakfast? Well, gasped the Ethiopian. That's a trick you should learn, leopard then you wouldn't show up in here like a sunflower against a tarred fence. Huh. You could use a trick like that too. You show up in this place like a jar of mustard in a dark cupboard. Be that as it may. Calling each other names is not going to catch dinner. Giraffe and zebra perfectly match their background, and we don't. So I'm going to take wise Bavian's advice and change. That really is a change for the better, said Leopard. But what about me? I still stand out like a bar of soap down the plug hole. Well, said the Ethiopian, how about taking Bavian's advice and go into spots? Like this, and this, and this. Thank you, brother, grinned the leopard. The game will never spot us now. So let's get even with Mr. One, Two, Three. Where's your breakfast? And ever since that day, the Ethiopian has never changed his skin again, and the leopard has never changed his spots. Both are quite happy as they are, 
just like that first exclusively sandy yellow brownish spotted leopard in the world.